The jumps through time are getting worse. I keep moving further back into my past. Thankfully, I have a plan that should stop them. I think we've done it. I, I don't seem to be moving around through time anymore. We do seem to be moving a bit faster, so I don't know if that's a side effect or if that's still a problem that we're gonna have to face. I think I'm okay with this problem. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to live with this. But there are some other things that are just a little bit weird. So we've managed to stabilize time, but other things have still been changing around here. And th these are the weird things I've been talking about. I went mining and, and there's all these new materials in here. I think the, the, the rift and maybe even the containment from where, where is it? all these items like I've continued to grow in my rift, you know, infected items here. Um, I think it's reshaping and even changing the world. So that's quite a problem that we're, we're going to have to worry about here. There's new uh, animals in the world. We got axolotls, there's goats, there's squids that glow. There's new ores with copper. It's, it's, it's very interesting. I've been talking to some of the natives too, and I had to put them into this containment center because they're even different. They're not acting like anything has changed, but they're also now providing these dripstone blocks in their trades here. All of our, our stone masons here. So I went ahead and I collect them and I, I got to keep them under observation as well. Cause they don't seem to be any wiser to what's going on here. I don't know. I'm still very worried about all this rift business and, and whatnot. So we got to get to work on our contamination unit and making sure everything is nice and contained super quick. One of the things that I really want to test out a bit more is this, this copper. It has interesting conductive properties. We're definitely gonna need to get a whole bunch more of that. Look at all that copper. I think we got a pretty good haul there. Roughly about four stacks. Let's go ahead, fortune this up and see how much we got. Now that we've got that down, let's go ahead and see how much copper we got. I feel like we got quite a bit and drum roll, please. That that's quite a bit of copper here. I might, we got 20 and a half stacks of copper. If I counted that right here, that's a lot of copper. So I did some quick maths and that's not enough copper for what I need to make for my containment center here. So we're gonna have to go ahead and uh, let's make a copper farm. So we spent a whole bunch of time at the copper farm. Hope you enjoyed the little time-lapse building up. I had to make a whole lot of changes to it. I ran into a whole, okay.
The cutest companion, a new chaotic event has begun. Okay, so I've heard of these things. We haven't had experience any of them yet since uh, hopping on and joining the world, helping out the other legates here. I guess we're gonna have to get to that. Let's go get a cute companion. Okay, so we gotta find ourselves an axolotl and get it in a bucket here. Flying over the ocean, looking for a ravine. So those are usually pretty good places to find them since they spawn in uh, near stone and in light level zero or something like that. So I'm hoping I can find a ravine that's underwater relatively quickly here. And, uh, oh yeah, here we go. We got one right down here, it looks like. Let's see if we can get down there if there's any axolotls. Let's see. All right, no axolotl down here, but we have a water creeper and some water spiders and there's a water zombie somewhere. Let's get out of here. Ooh, we have some glow squid. All right, we got a good underwater ravine here. Should be able to find some axolotls down here, I hope. We're not having any luck looking for these axolotls. That is a creeper. And an enderman. I'm gonna stare at the enderman. <laughs> you can't get me in here, chump. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Ah, ah! I need it, 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 I need it. I need it, I need it. Come here, 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 come here. I want you, I want you. Get in my bucket. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Why is this one being so hard to get? Ah, ah, I'm getting stuck to the bottom here. Where'd it go? Got him. All right, so our axolotl has been acquired here. We got a nice, uh, what was it, a cyan colored one? There we go, check it out right there. I need a name for this axolotl, so if you got an idea for one, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Let's pick that thing up before it suffocates or something. Where's my water? There we go, there's the water. There, nope. Uh, axolotl, get back in here. Okay, so yeah, let me know in the comments um, what I can name this axolotl. We're about ready to start building here. We got all of our materials prepped and ready to go for the containment center that we're making. We've had to move all of our storage materials because the build's gonna go right here. So let's go ahead, get that build up, and I will meet up with you after the time lapse. Check out this build. Doesn't this look great? I am so happy with how this turned out. Um, it probably looked a little bit different from the time lapse. So let's talk about a couple of things. I did some work on this uh, on on stream as well. So as you can see, we, we've added in these uh, these cobble deep slate pathways and roadways. We're gonna have this going all over the place. I decided to add them in to give you a little bit of an idea 
of what's going to be going on and what's going to be happening. And we're not going to do everything in a perfect straight line and grid shape. We're probably going to have like a little curve or something over here. Or, or I don't know. Maybe maybe this will be more of a curve. Who knows? Who knows? But this is our containment center right here. Uh, we've added in some texturing that wasn't in the time lapse with the granite coming in. We changed out the cobble floor here, put in some stone, added in a nice little trim of stone bricks. I might change that out for andesite to have something a little bit different here because I think this blends in too much with the stone. We did that over here on our towers too. So that way it's all going to be nice and consistent. And uh, we didn't talk about this earlier, but I also did add in uh, some, some spruce wood to the towers to give it a little bit of texturing and settled on and doing the uh, boilers that you all gave me some good comments and feedback on last time. But let's look more at this. This is, this is what the focus of the episode, not the towers, not the towers. They're, they're beautiful and I love them, but we're here for this. So yeah, we got a whole bunch of the pipes and things that we used on the towers, a little, little windows to get a sneak peek on the inside. We did some decorating inside there too. That was not in the time lapse. We have a larger boiler on the back of this one. Going again with the uh, the green, not the green, green, gray, <laughs> gray theme that we used on the towers. We got a giant smokestack here. I love how this turned out, especially using the, the, the dripstone. I think that actually looked really nice. I just liked how it worked. I thought it'd be a really cool uh, a smokestack going on here. And you could fall in right here. We got we to gotta do something with this down here. I'm thinking we might do some fog glass, you know, do multiple layers. Have it so, so it's nice and foggy going down. It looks good and dark. We got the roof. The roof is still a work in progress. We got to wait for everything to, to weather and get to that nice color that I want. But the, the roof is going to be textured. We're going to have the different stages of the copper. So we got some of the exposed copper, some of the weathering copper, and then eventually it'll change into that fully oxidized copper. We also used some lightning rods here to be like smaller pipes and under this one we even threw a campfire to you know show there's some smoke and thing coming out i'll probably add in some more campfires don't have anything lighting up these redstone lamps on top i'm thinking about maybe i want to put something there to light them i don't know i don't know we might we might mess with some redstone another time and get them in here and then of course we got to have our our gears and our cogs to have things turning and powering stuff so they're the same design this time just using some deep slate that we used over there on our towers and we have um oak trap doors again being as like the uh, the threading the treads or whatever to to make the gears spin and turn so let's go on inside we use some warped doors here to try and match a little bit with the dark prismarine and the copper once it oxidizes but on the inside here we started turning this into our storage room we spent some time on stream getting this all sorted we have our woods over here <laughs> the perch all we have is one sapping my buddy ruler would be happy about that but we moved our stone mazes in here too you know they're they're contaminated so they're they're all in here we have um some more spaces where we could possibly put additional villagers but for now i just got you know some furnaces crafting tables and chest my bed uh, taking up those spots and spaces. Let's go down below. All right, so here we are in the basement of the building. I love how this turns out. Let me know if you recognize what this build is. This is a this is based off of a movie, a series of movies actually that I watched when I was a bit younger, and I really enjoy. It. And I still like going back and watching. And I, I think I did a pretty good job of recreating this. Uh, when I when I showed it off in stream, the viewers seemed to know uh, what this was based off of. So we had a pretty good time with that. Uh, we did a dark oak ceiling in here, being supported by some blackstone braces. And uh, over here, this is our staircase to come down. We used some guardrails of iron bars being connected and linked up with the chain link fence. The fence is not very safe. You can you can still, you know, if you're not paying attention, just walk straight off here to your doom and be like, ow, ow, my ankles. Uh, we used some lanterns to provide lighting in the chain link fence. I think that worked out pretty well. Now, this is not a perfectly spawn proofed area. Uh, if I show you my light levels, yeah, there's a lot of darkness in here. So we're going to have to make sure that we get this all nice and safe and lit up. We got a whole lot more uh, decorating to do down here. Let me turn that off. Whoops. But yeah, I'm in love with this thing here. So let me know in the comments if you know what this is. But we have to actually come up with a system or a design or whatever. Come up here and, and access this. This is our, our main containment system. This is where we're going to put all of our rift related items that are infected or contaminated or whatever. And check this out here. I'm not a redstoner, but your bow tie here, your bow tie here did some redstoning. This is all designed by myself. I'm, I'm so happy with how this came out. So we can punch a note block to get in here. We have a couple different shulkers. We have our uh, nether stars and some items that were containing our rift items. So they might have a little bit of leftover energy since they were holding stuff for so long. We have our items from the, the wither fight collected in here. Uh, we have our gear that we came through the rift with. 
And then down here are some of the items from the advancement race uh, that we've been getting as we've completed different things all contained in there. So, yeah, you just punch a note block. It reveals it. You can punch a note block again. Locks it all up. You have the light turned on to make sure you know everything is nice and safe. But what I love the most is that it doesn't matter what note block I punch here. On either side, it can close or open this whole thing. And yeah, it's pretty awesome. Let me show you a little bit of the redstone on this. Nerd alert! Yeah, I've been wearing this Logical Geek Boy bow tie here that we found from the Wither fight. So I wonder if some of his his knowledge is rubbing off on me here. But we have just a simple double piston extender here, pushing and pulling that light in and out. So we can access the different shulker boxes. And then I just set up some things down below. So we have a observer detecting each note block down below and being able to trigger the double piston extender just lighting up the powered rails here. We have the same thing on this side so we can hit these note blocks and it makes the powered rail flash and be detected by this observer and trigger everything so we can do it from either side. We're back outside here and I don't know, ow, stupid skeleton. Don't know if you heard it, but we have a wandering trader here and I don't think anyone on the server has yet to get drip relief. I haven't checked his trades yet, so let's go ahead and see what he's got. Maybe he's got the drip relief. Come on, fingers crossed. There's no drip relief. There's only one thing that we can do here. So the wandering trader has been asked very kindly to leave and is no longer with us, but we did manage to uh, bargain with him and get his llama. So they're now part of our uh, llama army that we're slowly putting together here. But you know what I really wish you can do with llamas? I wish you could put on some horse armor. That'd be really cool. Have some horse armor on llamas and have some battle llamas. Wish we could make that a thing. So there is one other thing that I completely forgot to tell you about when I was showing you around in here and, and giving you a tour and, and letting you know what's going on and how the progress, everything went. Uh, remember those killer bunnies that we have? We, we, we got them contained right back here. So anything that's related to the rift is all contained inside this building now. And there are our killer bunnies. It was, it was quite a challenge to get them in here. But if you use some, some carrots, it could be golden carrots or regular carrots, they'll leave you alone. They won't attack you. So we, we accidentally, we may have accidentally killed one. And uh, I had to, whoa, had to go get another one. But it's all good now. See, look at them. They're all, they're all nice and hippity happy. They keep getting stuck in the wall, though, which is no good. But uh, yeah, whatever. And then sometimes we have to come in here and we have to feed them. So when I get any mob drops during the night, I just come in here and drop them off. And then uh, just, you know. Press the button once or twice and see what we get. So today they get to eat some bones and a bow. Whoops. Whoops. Nope. I'm sorry. I took the bow. Let's, 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 let's spit out another thing. There we go. A bone and some zombie flesh. So we got to keep them all nice and fed. So I took the liberty to make one last quick change on here in this build. We changed out one of our furnaces right here for an anvil. And I did that because I had to name an item. I asked you all last time, what should I name some of my items? And we still got more things to name, so let me know down in the below, uh, down in the below, down in the comments below, what I should name some other things. So far, we have our sword is named, and we have our our boots. None of the other stuff is named yet, except for our bow. We had a suggestion here to name our bow "Pointed Expressions," and that came from Joe Moore. So thank you, Joe, for that suggestion. Actually, I really liked that idea, and I took the liberty to go ahead and heal up my bow. And is there anything we can shoot? No, there's nothing we can shoot. I'm not going to shoot a llama. None of that's happening, but yeah. So thank you again, Joe, for that bow suggestion there. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Check it out. We got our first bit of oxidized copper right here next to us. We got a few more coming in around here. I don't think there's any on this side yet. We got a whole bunch of the, uh, what is this, the, the weathered copper, a little bit of the exposed here. There's another fully oxidized block right there. And then also, at the front of the door right here. So this is looking real good. I want most of this to be the uh, the weathered copper, a little bit of the oxidized copper. We got to spend a little bit more time doing some AFKing here, but we're not going to get to that today. So happy with how this came out. We got everything all nice and safe and secure inside of our Rift Containment Center. So as long as this thing stays powered, which it takes up a whole lot of power, we should be just fine. <laughs>